Okay, I think we're probably just about at that time. So, um, yeah, so look, thank you very much for joining our monthly learning webinar. Today we have a senior 40 systems architect with us, Ruin Ru having that, excuse me, I've mispronounced your surname there, um, uh, who will be discussing the attributes of SD WAN and some wider management security considerations. We've also got a head of technology, Mike Gilroy Scott, who is sitting in the wings. And please do feel free to send any questions across the chat um, as, uh, as as they come in. He'll be able to pass those through to us and we'll be able to answer them and bring those, bring those into the webinar. And myself, co-founder of Formation Tech. So for, for those who don't know us in the webinar today, we, we were founded with the purpose of uh, of using technology to make our customers' lives easier. And this started with moving legacy technology to the cloud uh, with a focus on voice and contact center primarily. And what we learned in doing this was that um, a lot of the network security and infrastructure that we were, uh, that the customers were working from were really sort of built and designed to, to support the infrastructure that we were moving away from. So now in today's sort of post on-prem worlds, you know, businesses are rarely using VPNs to go to off office servers. Um, also, a lot of applications now on SaaS, private cloud, or, the, or they're delivered in places outside of the office. And hybrid working, which is really just working in many respects for many businesses, means that peaks and troughs of bandwidth and utilization throughout a week are unpredictable. And we're finding it quite increasingly unmanaged. And in fact, Ruin, it's, it's quite interesting having you on to discuss the, the, the elements today, because we were spe speaking in the run up to today's webinar about your experience of working in the South African market, which is, is where you're from. And you, you, you were explaining the prevalence of SD1 and how it landed there. And there's some quite interesting parallels, almost perhaps in reverse, as to how the UK market is being driven now. And, you know, SD1 has been talked about for a long, long time in this market in the UK. Um, and so now it hasn't had the same level of traction, some may argue purpose, but in the context of, of, of that, you know, to perhaps give us a, your view, Fortinet's view on current trends we're seeing in the UK market today. Yeah, yeah, so just maybe first of all, yeah, so I'm Ruan Havenkha, um, I'm a channel at SD1 Fortinet. I've been with the company now for about five and a half years. I moved to the UK last year, so a lot of my experience was actually in the Southern African market. Uh, and what we found there in terms of SD-WAN was quite interesting is SD-WAN, the concept of SD-WAN sort of arrived when fiber to the home and fiber to the offices were being rolled out. So no longer was bandwidth at branches an actual issue. All right. So an MPLS in Africa is really expensive. So we saw a huge adoption of SD-WAN. And when I moved, I actually thought, oh, I'll be done with SD-WAN consulting now. And I, I mean, this is probably like my fourth or fifth SD-WAN webinar this year. It really is a, a, a popular topic. Um, I've consulted at some UK-based um, telcos as well. And it seems like all the telcos and MSSPs that sold MPLS is now selling an SD-WAN managed service as well. All right, so in the yeah. UK, the parallel is bandwidth was never really an issue here, but you do forget about the application performance which is now everything. And the fact that users are really, as you said, truly hybrid. So before COVID, we had a lot of on-prem users. It was not weird to see users going to the office every single day. Um, I did see a stat at our conference yesterday and they said 38% of workers are, are working from home now and doing hybrid work, right? So users really work from anywhere. So with COVID, what we saw is all of, at Fortinet especially, all of a sudden, your cloud on-ramp strategy is really increasing. So we had lots of users moving to, uh, or, or companies moving to uh, AWS, Google Cloud, and, and Microsoft Azure. Um, and we also saw the obviously remote uh, connectivity, uh, uh, a bump in that. So all the endpoint solutions, because now all of a sudden you had a need to control your users remotely as well. And with that, we now need to cater for this truly hybrid uh, environment as well going forward. Yeah, and I guess we've seen it in the sort of in the sort of front end of the market as well, where we're meeting customers who, you know, obviously everyone moved on mass and at a great speed into the cloud because they needed to to support this hybrid way of working, <clears throat> and this very rigid MPLS infrastructure, which, by the way, over the, over in the UK was a lot cheaper, so didn't have the same restrictions and need to be looking for other things because it worked for a lot of businesses. When you've got multi sites, you've got servers, you want to have security, you want to have like low latency backups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We, we, we've we've seen that right now that actually the conversations we're having not only the costs coming down in in the bandwidth, but also the need to have that flexibility, is 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 much greater, um, and you know I, I think we're going to come on and talk about reporting, in in a little bit more detail kind of f further down the line. But you know I, I think about an example of a customer that we were talking to to recently. You know that there, there was a certain narrative that everything is in the cloud and nothing's on premise. Whereas actually, that's not actually strictly true. And you know, there is still a, a purpose for point to point. There's still in some respects a purpose for MPLS, but it's 
it's yeah. it's in it's in the supporting of the infrastructure as opposed to being the entire infrastructure. Um, is, is there any, any particular case examples you can kind of bring in to talk around uh, it with that? Yeah, we do, we do also see with uh, this cl uh, hybrid mm -hmm. cloud sort of strategy, we see a huge case for cloud native firewalling um, mm -hmm. and cloud native protection as well. All right, or cloud network uh, uh, protection, where if you think about it, Microsoft and AWS, they have some security controls, but someone needs to actually check their homework as well. Right. And that's just one portion of your business because you still have your on prem. What sort of linking it together? And uh, we did also see one of the trends is it might sound funny to, to the audience, but we saw vendor consolidation being a thing at customers saying, I want Fortinet for my access. All my access needs to be controlled by Fortinet. You know, it just makes it simpler from a management perspective, because if it's easier to manage, you can make less mistakes um, and obviously less threats. Um, and, and, you know, if you look at the, the current trends in the market, with regards to threats, uh, ransomware is something that really stands out. I had a look this morning, and in our report, or the 40 Guard Labs report for last year, the half year, H2, we saw a 60% increase, so more than double um, of actually what the ransomware was in that quarter, or that half a year. So it's crazy. Um, so, you know, security will always be part of an SD WAN conversation as well. So basically, you need something that gives you ease of management, so single pane of glass. You need secure SD WAN, um, and obviously your your security needs to be there as well. Yeah, and in fact, go, go, going back to the more sort of uh, pure levels of <clears throat> say traffic optimization and management, we're going to talk about reporting in a bit more detail just now. But this <clears throat> this switch out from MPLS and the need to manage priority and, and, and bandwidth is, is also driven by the fact that the applications people are using now are that much more different. So you know, if yeah. you were to take two or three years ago, you know, it would have been. In, internal traffic to servers and it may have been some video maybe a little bit of voice whereas now the number of people and types of workers that are in on different days is totally unpredictable and unmanaged um and so from an sd round point of view is it worth the audience who, who aren't as familiar to perhaps give some of the sort of high, high level purposes that yeah. we see or you see more specifically in the market around that yeah so if you think about it just take teams the platform would be using right now as an example before covid not a lot of us use teams you, you might use Teams once or twice a week, if even. Right now, it's become our actual work tool. So the amount of bandwidth consumed by Teams is now critical, and the stability of Teams in your world would be critical, right? So application performance and SLAs on applications in terms of latency, jitter, and, and your packet loss are now critical. You know, having things like redundancy in your bandwidth at, uh, at your branches are now very, very uh, important because, you know, time is money. If you can't be on a call if you can't contribute you you really aren't you can't really be seen as working if i spoke to a colleague the other day and he, he said he's actually deploying sd1 at home i have it running at home as well you know for simple reason being if we don't have internet we can't work you are literally uh, mm -hmm. unproductive but to just go back to the sort of the building blocks of sd1 right all sd1s essentially have a couple things uh, that are the same so you have vpns with multiple links uh, you have policy-based routing and you have one-touch provisioning. And I know we'll probably chat about the 40 manager uh, in a while mm -hmm. as well. So with us, all our VPNs, the multiple links, all our interfaces gets managed via our actual firewalls so the 40 gate. Uh, your one-touch provisioning happens via the 40 manager and then obviously all your reporting happens mm -hmm. on the 40 analyzer. So it's a simple way to sort of bring everything together. <laughs> And in fact, yeah, with, with those tools, and we'll come on to some of those use cases and some of those examples in a moment, but what we're also seeing is with the unpredictability, the unknown within within bandwidth, you know, given the reporting capabilities and also the management capabilities, you know, we, we work with a number of carriers downstream from where we'd be putting, say, a Fortinet device that are giving us the ability to provide flexible bandwidth. Now, that could be for a school where they're, where they're just not operating for some weeks or months of the year because of holidays and such like. It could be um, <clears throat> based on projects, based on workloads, but actually by having the ability to both route, determine, optimise traffic based on application and, and, and flow is, is, re is really, really important. And in fact, you, you touched on it a moment ago. So, yeah, for, for 40 Analyzer, um, again, this you know, it's got quite a specific area of uh, Fortinet's offering, but the the, the purpose of it, I mean, we, we host this ourselves in Azure and AWS actually for clients, but we also, when they're of a certain size, we build it for them. And I, we've got lots of use cases where it's been particularly helpful. But again, for the, the purposes of this webinar, perhaps, you know, can we perhaps address some of the, the yeah. challenges we're looking, that the reason this exists and the reason people are needing this kind of reporting alerting within their infrastructure? 
Yeah, so Forty Analyzer started out in life many years ago as a logging and reporting tool, right? Very simple. It's a straight syslog. You just log from your firewalls centrally to one tool and you can provide reports, right? Over time, it's become more and more intelligent as well, where we bring predictive analytics to it, uh, multiple different reports and dashboards and specific monitors for things like your SD-WAN as well. So in terms of monitoring and understanding your bandwidth, first of all, because a lot of customers don't actually know what their requirements are. They can't really tell you what's your throughput required for Teams or, or for, for uh, Skype, whatever the case may be. So we actually have a built-in tool called the CTAP uh, report. And we have the CTAP for next gen firewall, which is a security tool, but we have it for SD-WAN as well, where we can actually tell you, all right, from this external interface, your internet link, I can see these are the seven top sort of areas in terms of uh, just categories where your traffic is going. And under these seven areas, I can see your main application is Microsoft Outlook and Teams, and this is being used. And this now enables the C-levels to go make a decision on bandwidth in future as well. And obviously you can report on that over time as well, so you can actually form your own uh, trends as well. Uh, and the Fortune Analyzer also acts as a mini SOAR for all your other Fortunate products as well. So you can essentially go and write an automation script. It's very, very simple to any function on the FortiGate. So if you see something on the FortiGate, take action accordingly via the Forty Analyzer. All right. So for example, if a link goes down or whatever the case may be, you can just get say, I want notification on my mobile phone or I want an email uh, and I can go and manage it accordingly. Yeah, and we've built a lot of these standard event handlers into our into our managed service yeah, tool yeah. as well. Um, and cl clients equally use them for their own purposes. And uh, I mean, I've got some interesting examples when I guess le le less less based around alerting, but more about about sort of knowledge where, you know, that there was awareness within the organisation that certain sites and certain activity was going on that shouldn't be kind of going on. And we we're able to narrow that down to the access points, narrow it down to actually the fact that they're wireless security code was shown at the reception desk opposite a cafe <laughs> so it was people not in their business accessing the infrastructure but nonetheless you know at the moment there's a lot of an anonymity between what goes on on someone's network um and yeah there's a lot of a lot of security infrastructure and, provided by the likes of microsoft that can block a lot of the bad stuff going on but actually the reporting across the whole stack is something we found enormously useful yeah the nice thing is you can obviously build your own <laughs> reports as well so you can have a wireless sd-wan firewalling and endpoint report all in one where mm -hmm. if you're using multiple vendors for this, you'd have multiple reporting tools and then you're digging for errors, you know, seeing, trying to find out where am I actually going wrong here? So, you know, time to detect patient zero is everything. Exactly. And, and going back to, to the point we were discussing a moment ago, you know, with the CTAP, we have used that quite successfully with, with a number of customers where they've either overutilized their bandwidth or massively underutilized it, but either way, they're in a bit of a blind spot as to what to do. Um, and that, that often, you know, again, if they're doing a cloud migration, it's hard to know, well, what is, What's going across the point to point because it's replication? What's going across because it's actually the need to to access a server? But again, starting with the the ISP piece, we we can work quite effectively with the tools that Fortinet provides to enable us to provide flexible bandwidth. So effectively, we say, well, let's start with 100 meg on a gig, and we can just scale it up as you need it, or scale it down and bring you a balance. And again, if you're then growing, or you find there are peaks and troughs through through the period, we can. We can, we can manage that and uh, again it's, it's it's quite effective certainly in today's market and it's it's whilst that tool again sd1 has been around for a long time as a principle as, as, a, as a tool that's something that's been marketed quite heavily but like it's really interesting these purposes are now really flowing through uh, to the market now that the, the whole world has changed the way in which they work fundamentally yeah you can actually monitor your internet uh, connection as well and your sla in terms of uptime and actually keep your isp and check over time as well yeah, I mean, I've yeah, certainly, I won't name and shame my personal ISP, but I'm forced to take a specific ISP here and I'm personally not happy with them and they have like an 88% percent uptime. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's, 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 that's good enough for me. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure I'd be giving enough so, many uh, people to be fair. But yeah. yeah, I have to explain to them <laughs> what SD1 actually is when I complain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> we also touched on reporting a moment ago. Sorry, um, management, excuse me. And, uh, you know, in a similar, similar vein to analysis, we, we have the 40 manager product, we, we host this ourselves or we build it for clients of a certain size. Um, and you're probably best place to cover again the benefits of this piece, but uh, we got lots of use cases as well. But do you want to perhaps uh, for the audience yeah. to give us a bit of an overview? Uh, again, 40 manager started out in life as a tool just to manage multiple firewalls. So I always say uh, if you have more than three firewalls, it becomes an issue to manage them individually, right? So the 40 manager assists you with creating templates. Uh, but it also assists you to create SD-WAN templates and to do your one-touch provisioning, 
right? So we actually have a tool called uh, Forty Deploy, which is now being rebranded into a new portfolio called Forty ZTP. But what it actually does is, if you're procuring forty gates, let's say you're procuring twenty forty gates, and you have to deploy them somewhere in Wales, it's a bit remote. There's no skills on site, but there is someone that can actually rack and stack the forty gates. All right, you can actually let us know and say, with this PO, I'd like forty deploy, please, and they'll give you a key. That key you can then use uh, to import it all to forty cloud and then manage it via forty manager. So then you don't even have to touch your forty gate. Flow straight from the mm -hmm. factory, it would be linked. Uh, so it really helps you to deploy multiple sites within seconds. Um, so you can actually just use a template for all your SD WAN config, and in fact, the actual firewall config as well. Um, so it has become an extremely uh, powerful tool. I mean, we have customers with five, six thousand firewalls um, deployed via Forty Manager. Yeah, yeah, um, and and it's really helpful as well where you've got a. I mean, we obviously often co-manage these these environments with our clients. Yeah. But equally, I'll have various hearings with their teams. I might have a tier one engineer who has a level of IT experience, but doesn't have the understanding capability on their policies. And you know, manager or, or that type of approach gives some some agility to allow ch control change without risk. Do you, do you want to perhaps go yeah, to that? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 Role-based access is very important. Um, so we actually have a specific tool for that as well. But the 40 manager, 40 analyzer and 40 gates have role-based access built in. So you can have your read-only reports and all those sort of things. And you can also directly from the 40 analyzers schedule uh, reports to be emailed to specific users. They never mm -hmm. need the access. But yeah. obviously for analysts, they all, always only need read-only access. So yes, that can all be done by the, the tools as well. Yeah, and you know we, we talked about security, zero-day threats, firmware upgrades, software upgrades. You know we 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 deal with a variety of different customers. Some some we deal with who have already gone in down the journey of having Fortinet implemented, but not necessarily in a strategic way where they've gone. Well, it's the right product, but let's just get it into a few sites and we're kind of yeah, yeah. bring it together later. Um, and that obviously creates a challenge for managing these things that come around, as in like as there's new new risk today. Again, so. In that context, Forty Manager, um, do you want to perhaps um, cover the upgrading and management of the, the solutions from a centralized point? Yeah, yeah, that's the other great thing is for firmware firmware upgrades and policy changes. I mean, you can do a policy change and within two clicks actually deploy a new policy to five or six thousand forty gates if you want to. Um, and we use metadata. So uh, to the non-technical people in the audience, that's where you put the little percentage uh, signs to sort of have it uniform so you can match it to specific interfaces because obviously on every single site that the interfaces won't have the same names but uh, you can do that from one central point two clicks and you've actually deployed all those uh, policies and, and you've secured it uh, but even if you use the analyzer and manager in unison you know you would actually get a notification on the 40 analyzer with our indicators of compromise and yeah. it would then make suggestions for you to go take on your actual firewall estate, which is actually even a little bit better than that. You're being proactive as well. It's not just a reactive control. Yeah. And so look, we've been talking about the the, the, the uh, 40 gate and the security element here, but um, it's possibly worth also mentioning around bringing in, you know, switchings and, and access points, like single site and multi sites. Do you want to perhaps touch yeah, yeah, on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, in, in our world, I think all vendors have a bit of a different naming convention for it. We call it SD branch. Mm -hmm. where you basically have SD-WAN, so you have your, your remote 40 gates. Now we're saying, well, we call it hanging off, you hang off a 40 uh, AP or a 40 switch. And those are actually centrally managed via the 40 gate. And in turn, if they configured in 40 link mode, you can manage them from the 40 manager as well. So it's the same concept. You go and create a 40 AP and a 40 switch template. If you go to a new site and install an access point, it's a click of the button to just say it's a 40 AP 221F and this is the config it needs to get, and it starts broadcasting the SSID uh, yeah. that you need. Um, I've personally uh, done some work in, in wireless organizations as well. Uh, it is a huge time saver to configure it that way uh, because of the fact that you're managing it via the 40 gate. It does the sort of VLANing for you. Um, I was always a guy that needs to go do the VLANing to match the wireless from a third party vendor with the 40 gate or whatever firewall it is. So that integration really, really helps and saves you time. Fantastic. Um, I mean, look, there's security, you know, we touched upon it and there's a bit of a thread through here from we talked about in the SD WAN rounds, <coughs> reporting, excuse me, <coughs> about the analysis piece. Um, we, we've talked a bit about uh, SASE and the, the broader market. And, you know, a lot of what Fortinet is about specifically is the end to end security, you know, and how that ties in. Um, so 
again, from a sort of more market perspective, and I guess where this is going, you know, we've talked a lot about the offices and that that side of the hybrid working. You've got users who sit outside of that in, in anywhere, you know, in any place, in, in any time, in any anyhow, really. And, uh, you know, perhaps perhaps touch, touch on this area as a uh, uh, as an next point. Yeah, yeah. So Forty SASE or SASE Solutions is basically where we as Fortin also are seeing the market go. Because as I mentioned earlier, we spoke about the on-prem, we spoke about the, the remote work and you spoke about cloud. But what tool is actually bringing all of this together? So Forty SASE, essentially what it is, it's a cluster of 40 gates deployed over multiple pops across the world. Um, that gives you a management platform, again, single pane of glass. We, we're pretty good with the GUI at Fortinet. Uh, and be deployed over the 40 client tool that you already know, right, uh, on the actual endpoints. But what makes 40 SASE unique is it also does your, your CASB, so your cloud access security brokerage. It can do it in line as well. So you can now go, go and control remote users because you are actually managing all their traffic via cloud-based 40 gate, right? So it's like being connected to the office as soon as that tunnel is up, okay? Um, it also does your zero trust, uh, so your ZTNA, where you don't need a VPN anymore. We use a certificate, right, to authenticate you on a website. Uh, and it also does sandboxing. So a lot of the features on 40 client is also covered there. Now, the good part is it also links with your on-prem 40 gates where you could do your SD-WAN. So it is finally the one sort of tool to bring everything together. Look, it's a newer service. We have a big marketing push at, at Fortin because we've heavily invested in all these different points of presence around the world now. Mm -hmm. And we have some big key customers uh, that are already on it. Um, I can't mention the names. We have a very large telco in the US that was our first uh, anchor customer. You'll you'll definitely know the, the, the telco. Um, so that really is where we're seeing it. And basically from an academic perspective, you have these two worlds. You have SASE and uh, SSE. So the one is Secure Access Services Edge, and the other one is just Security Services Edge. The one includes SD-WAN, the other one exclude. So according to Gartner, it's now going to be called, called SSE. But I do feel similar to when SD-WAN started, you know, we had WAN link balancing and you had policy-based routing and you had application uh, traffic shaping and all these things. And we said, yeah, but it's WAN link load balancing, but it does all these other things, right? It's different features. And it's exactly the same story with SASE now. It's one tool that eventually will become all these features and just be, will be called SASE or SSE. Yeah. And at this stage of adoption, are there certain verticals, certain sectors that are, are really getting this and it's really sort of landing with them? Or is it, do you, you find it's more generic in that, you know, people, if most organizations have hybrid working, most people have this challenge, security, yeah. et cetera. Is, uh, is, is there any particular places? Uh, yeah, I, I predominantly play in the enterprise space, so very large customers, so your 1,000, 2,000 user sites. I'd say basically, you know, I think if you're under 1,000 users, you typically don't have that need yet. You might not have that big of a presence in the cloud or, mm -hmm. uh, or remote yet. Um, but yeah, from 1,000, I should seriously con start considering SASE. What you would also see is that, Eventually, I'm not saying this right now, 40 clients and 40 SASE will really overlap as well. So you probably go one or the other uh, and it will just do all of these things in one solution. Um, I see there are quite a bit of questions. Yeah, so Mike, do you want to perhaps, um, you've got a couple of questions here to, to put to, uh, put to uh, Ryan. Yeah, I think it was mentioned earlier on, but I've got a sort of jumping back to, you know, you know the, the CTAP product from from Fortinet can we just sort of yeah. just go over that again and just just describe what it is and what it will give someone um in case that people on the call All don't right. know okay cool so there's two flavors to it so the first flavor is it's essentially you get a 40 gate from us or from the DISTI uh, or even if it's your own 40 gate and we go install that 40 gate in line or via a, a span port or right, a sniffer port so we essentially span all the traffic uh, from a, uh, the customer's own firewall to our firewall, we essentially pick up what the firewall missed, right? We then provide a report after about seven days in a cloud-based portal. But you can also do your own. I'm sure, I'm not sure, Mark, if you do your own version of the CTAP, where you essentially just use the 40 analyzer report uh, for the CTAP because it's the same thing. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, so you can do either or, but it's a really, really nice uh, cookie cutter report. Um, and the success rate is really high. Our global success rate is over 80 percent. Um, personally, all the CTAPs I've done have led to a sale. So it really is. I mean, if you show a customer basically the the inner workings of their network and all the, the threats, how can they not consider it? You know, <laughs> well, that's quite right. And it's this is, yeah. I guess, what people are 
you know, it, a lot of things around security is you don't really know about them until you until yeah. you go to find them, and that that that's the risk that exists out there, I suppose, isn't it? Um, Mike, was there another question you had there at all? Uh, no, that's it for now. Um, but I'm just conscious we've got a few more minutes left. So anyone on the call, if you have anything you want to put in the chat, and um, we'll try and get that answered for you. Fantastic. Well, look, we've we covered a fair bit of ground here today. Actually, I mean, we yeah. started off around SD WAN. Uh, the analysis piece and management piece, security piece. Um, we, we do these webinars every month and we've done with Microsoft, we've done with, with Fortinet and in a number of different areas. So you know, if there's no more questions to come from, from the audience. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. I mean, hopefully we've covered the things you wanted to have covered in coming. Um, I think, you know, what we set out to discuss here around where ST, SD-WAN sat, you know, it's, it's, it, is a, it is a topic that's been, I say, marketed quite heavily, but there's a genuine purpose for it now. And we're seeing some real traction ourselves and for customers having knowledge control agility is absolutely key in today's markets um and with the migration to the cloud again it it couldn't be more more more, more relevant i mean um to yourself Ryan, we, we, we talked about uh sassy as, as the next thing ai you know future stuff if you go forwards and you say like you know i always like to ask this at the end of every webinar really kind of the the, the, the sort of you know the, the the real future future stuff is how things can be transformed and if i look at where we are in 2023 with technology compared to where we're in 2022 it's amazing we're only just coming out of may it seems like the whole thing's turned on its head really but you know if you were to go and say well look, where where is where is this going like you know what are the next big things outside of the sort of sassies and such like from either personal or otherwise point of view what, how would you perhaps yeah. answer that well, AI is one thing as well. So your network detection and response, that, that is definitely one thing. And um, what, what I'm seeing is that mail, email is still your number one threat vector, right? But as I mentioned, the amount of ransomware you're seeing now, and what I'm personally scared of is what we saw in, H, uh, in AI, if you have a look at like what chat GPT can do and all these AI that, that's producing fake news and things nowadays, if that can be used on phishing attacks and spear phishing attacks, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be really, really interesting in future. So uh that's sort of my main fear in terms of it's it's literally the ai i'm actually a bit scared of that um, yeah no i mean it's, it's huge yeah. i mean i'm telling anyone's really fully in certain from a government point of view or otherwise it's 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 a lot of people have to do a lot of catch-up time at the moment but uh you know that's that's an interesting interesting point um yeah. look so just say thank you again we are hosting another um learning webinar uh, next month, uh, we'll be sure to invite you out. We're also doing a follow up on on site in person event at Fortinet to discuss a number of these 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 kind of areas and such like. So your account manager or your contact will reach out to you. But please do the same for us. Um, but uh, many thanks for joining today, Ryan. Thank you so much for your time. It's been generally re really interesting from from my part as, as well. I'm sure everyone else that's joined today. Um, look forward to catching up very soon. And th thanks all for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Let's do it soon. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye. Bye bye.